Today, I'm building the ultimate millionaire crypto portfolio in 2023 to prepare for the next bull run. To do this, you need diversity and quality. So if you want to know what tokens I'm buying and how much of each, keep watching. Welcome back to the Virtual Bacon channel where I teach you how to build wealth in crypto. Crypto investing is very different from crypto trading. Due to the volatile nature of crypto trading, it isn't for everyone. In fact, trading is not the most profitable strategy because most people end up losing money in the long run. The most profitable strategy I recommend is to buy during the late stages of the bear market, which is right now, and holding for the long term. The trick is to fill your portfolio with quality projects that have a high chance to become popular again in the next bull run, and allocate the right amounts based on their potential returns and your risk tolerance. I've said this in all my videos recently, bear markets are the easiest time to make money as long as you are patient. And right now is the best time to create a crypto portfolio because we're in the late stages of the bear market. The CPI number and the latest FOMC speech are showing that inflation is slowing down and the US Fed might start to pivot in 2023. The next Bitcoin halving is also coming in April 2024 and the crypto bull runs usually start one year before the Bitcoin halving. Lastly, most leverage in the crypto markets have been washed out. Lending platforms are all going bust and greedy players like Celsius and FTX have all collapsed. All of these signs are showing 2023 to be the potential start of the next bull run. Cool, on to the portfolio. I looked at several key factors of each project to determine whether it was a buy for me or not. Number one, will the token survive a prolonged bear market? Number two, how big is the fully diluted valuation compared to its competitors? Number three, is the project team still motivated to continue working on the project or have they given up? Number four, is the project in a narrative that's likely to see hype again in the next cycle? And number five, is it a leader in its sector and is the project continuing to grow by user adoption and money metrics. After looking at each project on these criteria, here is the complete breakdown of my ultimate crypto portfolio for 2023. First up, we have the biggest part of my portfolio, Bitcoin and Ethereum, which take up 25% each in this portfolio. This is because they're the safest assets in crypto and actually have super good ROI potential from current prices. Assuming Bitcoin and Ethereum can both make a new all-time high by the next bull run peak with a conservative estimate of reaching 2x the 2021 all-time high, that gives us a target of $136,000 per Bitcoin and $9.6,000 per Ethereum. At today's prices, that's an 8x return for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. No, they don't have 50x potential, but I'll never be upset with an 8x return within a few years. Bitcoin and Ethereum both have the highest chance of actually achieving these targets among all other cryptos, since they're the largest and most recognized coins. So because of this, I'm allocating 50% of this portfolio to BTC and ETH. If you want to learn how I'm accumulating Bitcoin and Ethereum in the bear market, check out my Bitcoin bottom buying plan video, link is in the description. Next up in my portfolio is Polygon's Matic token, which takes up 5% of this portfolio. Polygon is the leading Ethereum scaling solution. And as Ethereum continues to dominate the decentralized application space, it's clear that Polygon will continue to ride the same adoption wave. Another reason why I'm bullish on Polygon is that unlike other layer two scaling solutions, Polygon supports all types of layer two technology. They have the old POS sidechain, optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, app chains, privacy chains, or whatever new technology to emerge in the future. It's clear that Polygon's approach is to latch onto the Ethereum layer two narrative and adapt to whichever technology that ends up being the winning solution. This makes them extremely flexible and highly likely to survive in the long run. For these reasons, I see Polygon as a no brainer pick, assuming Ethereum continues to do well in the next cycle. One concern for Polygon is that they still haven't released most of their scaling solutions to support Ethereum mainnet. This is a clear distinction that people get wrong all the time. The Polygon network you are using today is a separate layer one blockchain rather than a layer two for Ethereum. They call it a side chain, but it's technically not the full layer two solution yet. The layer two technologies of Polygon still haven't been released to the public. This is understandable as Polygon wants to focus on all the layer two technologies in order to not miss the boat, but this means their prologue time to reach the market. Another downside of Polygon is its high valuation. Currently already a top 10 crypto, it sits at a $7 billion valuation. Assuming Polygon price pumps alongside Ethereum, it needs to outperform the 8x estimate of ETH to be worth the investment. And because of this, I haven't bought into the Matic position just yet. 
I'll continue to watch its price relative to Ethereum with the goal of eventually allocating 5% of the portfolio to it. For my Polygon price target as well as other altcoin price targets, make sure to check my latest video on the top 7 altcoin picks for the next bull run. Link is in the description. The next altcoin in my portfolio is Arbitrum. Arbitrum is another leader in the Ethereum layer 2 space. Arbitrum's main advantage over Polygon is their exceptional technology which is already live on mainnet. The Arbitrum 1 rollup has been widely adopted by the Ethereum community for one and a half years and is currently the number one choice for Ethereum developers. This is due to Arbitrum heavily focusing on the optimistic rollup as their layer 2 technology instead of adopting every type of solution like Polygon. That's not to say Arbitrum is behind in technology as they are also actively working on their own app chains called Arbitrum Trust and already have adoption from Web2 giants like Reddit. The reason I picked Arbitrum over the other competitors like Optimism or Metis is for their larger ecosystem and and user adoption. As a crypto developer and investor myself, I talk to so many new blockchains with big ambitions but no user or developer traction. So trust me when I say that to build successful ecosystems, you have to get the builders on board. Arbitrum has been able to sustain its high TVL or total value locked and fees for the majority of 2022 all without any incentive to attract people. This means developers are willingly choosing Arbitrum as their network to deploy on, and users are enjoying their experience. I can personally attest to the user experience of Arbitrum, as it is second to none. Transactions go through in under two seconds, and it truly feels like I'm interacting with a traditional website rather than a decentralized app. This is in stellar contrast to Optimism, which was unable to sustain its TVL and users, even with their OP token acting as incentive to attract users. Keep in mind that the Arbitrum token is not released yet, but there is an opportunity right now to qualify for the Arbitrum airdrop that will likely take place within the next few months. I have made an in-depth video on how to get the Arbitrum airdrop. Check it out with link in the description. When the Arbitrum token eventually releases, I plan to make it 5% of my portfolio. Moving on to the alternative layer 1 picks in my portfolio. My first and potentially controversial pick is Solana. In the wake of the FTX collapse, Solana price took a big hit as many many were scared of the Sol token's relationship with FTX and Alameda. For perspective, Solana once had a market cap of $75 billion, and today it sits at only $4 billion. We've kind of seen the Solana DeFi ecosystem getting destroyed as well, but keep in mind that this is really because the main DeFi projects had their private keys held by FTX and Alameda. Specifically, Solid Wallet, Solid Wrapped Assets, Serum, Radium, and Solend were held by FTX. DeFi users also pulled their liquidity out as they feared for their asset safety given Alameda's involvement with Solana. However, when you look at real user stats like daily active users and NFT trading volume, Solana's ecosystem is still thriving. It's not the same as the bull market peaks, but it still has roughly the same number of active users as the quiet months of fall 2021 and winter 2022. And its NFT volume is even reaching new all-time highs. The active users, network stability nowadays, and enterprise adoption have all remained the same or increased since Solana peaked in price. The only thing that has changed is the widespread FUD about the project. This is why I think the current price of Solana at $10 truly feels oversold. It's sitting at the same price as the lows in March 2021 before Solana ever got popular. Just like picking up stocks when they have the same fundamentals but are undervalued in price, this is the same opportunity right now with Solana. Don't get me wrong, I understand why people are so afraid of Solana due to its massive rally and crash, which was heavily manipulated manipulated by FTX, but we shouldn't carry the old burden with us into the next cycle. Solana is an independent project and should continue to survive despite FTX and Alameda. And even if Sol price only revisits its all-time high, that would still give us a handsome 18x return in the next cycle. Because of this, I'm allocating 2.5% of my portfolio to Solana. The next layer one that I'm putting into this portfolio is Cosmos. I've been a long proponent of Cosmos as their technology is one of the most widely adopted across all blockchains second only to Ethereum and the EVM. Way back in 2018, Cosmos was already a big infrastructure provider for new blockchains. And most major chains you see today implement the IBC or Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol for their cross-chain messaging standard. This was invented by Cosmos. But the reason it wasn't popular before was their poor tokenomics. The Atom token wasn't set up to capture the value from IBC's adoption. However, in 2022, this issue has been addressed with Atom 2.0. The next few years of Cosmos development will focus on accruing value to the Atom token. 
which will directly impact its price. This should align nicely with the next crypto bull run in 2023 and 2024. Cosmos works as the underlying technology for the interoperable blockchain narrative that I see playing out in the next cycle. And when the hype wave around interoperability comes, I expect the Atom token to latch right onto it. I plan on allocating 2.5% of my portfolio to Atom. And I go over Cosmos in depth in my top seven altcoins video. So check it out if you want to see a full review. Next on the list is the Open Network's Ton token. The Open Network is a blockchain made by Telegram. If you haven't been in crypto that long, you might not know that Telegram actually held one of the biggest ICOs back in 2018, raising $1.7 billion for the Ton token. Unfortunately, they were struck down by the SEC and had to return most of the money. Fast forward to August 2021, Ton quietly released to the market as a non-profit entity called the Open Network and slowly climbed to top 21 on the coin rankings list today. I think this network will be one of the biggest no-brainer plays by the next bull run. The current use cases for Ton are Telegram users trading user IDs as NFTs, Tom payments, as well as other decentralized web usages like Tom proxy and Tom sites. It seems that Tom not only works for finance, but also as a distributed storage and messaging network. Tom developers draw comparison between Tom and the Tor project, which are both decentralized and private computer networks that can handle universal use cases. Eventually, Telegram plans to turn the chat app into a wallet for every user. This can create massive network effects comparable to major social media giants. In fact, if you search for at wallet in Telegram, it will bring up the hidden feature where you can set up a wallet directly within your Telegram account already. The open network's position reminds me of Solana's in 2021, and I could see a similar hype wave when Han is eventually pushed to all public Telegram users. This is why the Ton token will make up 2.5% of this portfolio. The last layer one picks I have for this portfolio are the recently launched Aptos and soon to launch Sui Network. I grouped them together as they use highly similar technologies and have come from the same team of Facebook's DM project. These two projects are highlighted as red in my portfolio as I think they still have a long way to go before being in fundamentally strong position. Purely being a cheap and fast blockchain is no longer worth the investment in my opinion. However, we must not discount the ability of these teams with their experience from leading Facebook's blockchain project since 2018. On top of that, having $300 million of money raised in their treasury in a bear market also puts them in the best position possible to survive until the next cycle. The main selling point for Aptos and Sui right now are their native Move programming language for developing smart contracts. This is derived from the Rust language used in Solana. Based on what I've heard from Solana developers, Move is actually a much smoother and easier technology stack to develop on. On top of this, with developers losing face in Solana, they are looking for alternative layer ones with similar tech stacks. This explains why most Aptos and Sui projects are made by previous Solana developers. This is also why I think Aptos and Sui are worthy bets, because either Solana makes a comeback or Aptos and Sui takes off. By having all three in the portfolio, you're covered either way. At the current stage, Aptos and Sui are still simply copy-pasting projects from Ethereum and sustaining themselves with their own treasury and ecosystem incentives. However, I do think these two networks have a better chance to reinvent themselves in the next bull market and find their own niches. They have a bigger chance than the existing EVM competitors like AVAX, Phantom, and Harmony. The market tends to value newer projects higher than older ones because they're likely to catch on to new narratives as they're still finding their way. And lastly, as Aptos and Sui founders still have much to prove in the crypto space, I expect them to keep building in the next cycle, unlike many other layer one teams that have seemed to give up. One major caveat is that Aptos still sits at a $4 billion fully diluted valuation, which is overvalued compared to the rest of the layer one picks on this list. Therefore, I'll continue to wait for its price to come down. And for Sui, I'll be waiting for the token to actually release and some price discovery first to make sure I buy in at a good price. For these reasons, 2.5% of this portfolio will be split among these two projects. The next category of coins in this portfolio are infrastructure projects for decentralized web applications. These applications are different from DeFi and crypto applications as they don't focus on financial use cases, but rather target things like decentralized social media, web hosting, 
and browsing and online messaging, etc. Filecoin is the leading infrastructure provider for such non-financial use cases of blockchain technology. It focuses on storing files for the decentralized web instead of just decentralized finance. You might not know this, but every major decentralized web project today is integrating Filecoin through the interplanetary file system, also known as IPFS. The IPFS standard is like the HTTP standard, but for Web3. IPFS is already the default solution to power NFT metadata. Every picture, video, and other rich media asset is stored on IPFS. The decentralized web and social narrative is one of my biggest conviction bets for the next cycle. And if they become big, Filecoin will be the number one solution that gets integrated in every application. However, one major concern for Filecoin is its tokenomics. Peaking at over $180 per token, its fully diluted valuation was as high as $260 billion. This meant that early investors had insane profits, which led to the price completely crashing during the 2021 bull market. Another problem is only 20% of the tokens have been released, so the circulating supply will get diluted over time. While I'm bullish on Falcoin's narrative, it's hard to imagine FIL token breaking this all-time high and its current valuations are still quite high. So while I plan to allocate 5% of this portfolio to Filecoin, I'm not buying in at any time soon. If you want to see my entry target and prediction for Filecoin, check my top seven altcoins video, link in the description. The next coin in my portfolio is Arweave. Arweave is another leading solution for non-financial use cases of blockchains. But unlike the temporary access layer of IPFS and Filecoin, Arweave focuses more on permanent file storage. If Filecoin and IPFS IPFS is the HTTP standard for Web3, then our weave acts more like the Google Drive file system for Web3. The cumulative weave size or the total amount of data stored on our weave is also continuing to grow during this bear market. As more and more blockchains, NFTs, and other rich media platforms are backing up their data to our weave. Instagram also announced that they'll be backing up user posts from IG onto our weave, proving its usage for the decentralized social media narrative. Again, this is one of the only core infrastructure projects behind the decentralized web narrative. If this narrative becomes big, investors will likely flock to Arweave as it's integrated in every application. Just like Filecoin, Arweave will be making up 5% of this portfolio as well. For the next section of my portfolio, I'm looking at cross-chain interoperability solutions. This area was heavily tested in the 2021 bull market, and while we saw a massive demand, we also saw massive risks with many bridges being hacked. Going into the next cycle, I expect the demand to remain from cross-chain DeFi users, but hopefully the technology can actually become stable to use. On top of this, we're seeing the advent of interoperability to not only focus on bridging assets, but rather letting applications interact with multiple blockchains at the same time. This is the core technology which Layer 0 does best, and Layer 0 is the next altcoin pick on this portfolio. Imagine you have a DeFi app which uses the full security of Ethereum for high-value transactions while executing small transactions on Solana for its instant speeds for the user experience. This is what Layer 0 already provides to some applications today. I fully expect interoperability to continue being a popular narrative going into the next cycle, but we must distinguish between the last generation of projects which are still developing a closed ecosystem such as Polkadot and the next generation of solutions that aim to connect every blockchain out there. Although Layer 0 is the market leader in cross-chain solutions today, you need to know that the Stargate token might not be the main token of the Layer 0 network. Stargate's STG token only serves the Stargate Finance Bridge, which is one application that the Layer 0 team built to facilitate bridging tokens between chains. This is why I have not allocated any money to Stargate and Layer 0 just yet because we don't know if Layer 0 will have another token sometime in the future. There have been hints on Twitter around a potential Layer 0 token airdrop in 2023, so keep an eye out for that or stay tuned here for updates. But for now, I'll continue to watch Layer 0 for when they announce the main token around their cross-chain infrastructure solution. This might be the Stargate SDG token, or it might be something else. When they do release the main token, I plan on allocating 2.5% of this portfolio to that token. The other interoperability project in this portfolio is Chainlink. Most people still think Chainlink is only an Oracle provider solution, but in 2022, Link has been heavily moving in the interoperability space with their CCIP or cross-chain interoperability protocol. 
We've seen how Chainlink was quick to deploy their Oracle to every chain and become the number one Oracle provider for the entire DeFi space. This clearly shows their team is capable of penetrating the market. My hope is for them to do the same and integrate interoperability for all blockchains. They have a real chance of becoming the default solution for all blockchains to connect with each other, similar to how they became the default Oracle solution. Chainlink CCIP also differs from the Cosmos slash Polkadot model, as it only connects existing blockchains, but doesn't require them to be tied down in a closed ecosystem. This puts it in the same category of next-gen interoperability solutions along with Layer 0. Another plus for for the Link token is its deep recognition in the DeFi space. Every major DeFi protocol uses Chainlink oracles and integrates the Link token in its products. Therefore, if we get another DeFi hype wave, Link token is likely to follow. In terms of price performance, Link flew under the radar in the 2021 bull market due to its hype wave arriving early in 2020 DeFi summer. This has caused many people to write off Link as an old coin, but do not ignore it. I think they can be a real contender in the next cycle. With all that said, Link will make up 2.5% of this portfolio. Moving on to some pure DeFi picks, my first choice is Uniswap. I chose Uniswap as they are still the undisputed king of DeFi. Uniswap was the first to popularize the AMM exchange model, which powers every decentralized exchange today. Without Uniswap, the DeFi hype wave and all the applications would have never existed. It truly was a groundbreaking technology that paved the way for the entire 2021 bull run. Although there are many other DeFi plays out there, I chose Uniswap primarily as they are both the inventor of the AMM and the market leader. When a new technology emerges, you want to bet on the inventors instead of the imitators, as inventors are much more likely to continue working on the project as they are emotionally attached to it. With copycats, they may be in it just for the money. For the case of Uniswap, we can clearly see their continued innovation with the incredible power of the UniV3 model, which dramatically helps DEX liquidity across every single exchange today. All exchanges have since copied this model just as they did with Uniswap V2. Uniswap has also also recently released their own NFT trading protocol and will potentially start distributing real yield to its token holders similar to GMX. Price action is also on our side as the UNI token has only seen one all-time high way back in May of 2021 and has been slowly declining ever since. The current price around $5 seems to have formed a sideways bottom since the Luna and 3AC crash in 2022 which shows now is a good period to start accumulating. Although Uniswap valuation still remains high at $4 billion, a bet on Uniswap is a direct bet on the DeFi narrative. If there is a DeFi boom sometime in the next cycle, Uniswap will undoubtedly be a top three coin in that narrative. This also gives our portfolio a bit of diversified risk, as other coins might not be so clearly categorized as a DeFi coin. The UNI token will take up 2.5% of this portfolio. Another bet I'm making in DeFi is around decentralized perpetual exchanges. These DEXs are different from Uniswap in the sense that they allow leverage trading with long and short positions instead of only swapping tokens between one another. You are probably familiar with this type of trading interface, but did you know that there are platforms that are completely decentralized and let you long short with leverage from your MetaMask wallet? You might want to ask, why do you need these platforms? My answer is simple, KYC and regulation. If you are a trader in the US, Canada, China, or any other restricted countries, you're running out of options quickly to trade with leverage on centralized exchanges. None of the popular exchanges accept users from these countries today. And as regulation becomes ever tighter, even using a VPN no longer helps. Exchanges now require you to KYC with an ID from an unrestricted country, so you are truly out of luck. My prediction is that both the users and exchange operators will start to migrate their leveraged trading platforms to decentralized exchanges. We've seen the popularity of GMX in 2022, and recently Bybit also launched their own perpetual DEX called Apex. Small plug, if you're forced out of centralized exchanges or just don't trust them anymore and need an alternative, I wholeheartedly recommend Apex. They are the only platform that's launched by a leading exchange like Bybit. All other competitors like GMX, DYDX, Gains, etc. are all DeFi startups first and trading second. While Apex has the same features as an advanced exchange like Bybit, 
but there's no KYC and you can trade straight from your wallet like MetaMask. Sign up with the link in the description and use code APEX-BACON for a welcome bonus. It's free and it helps support the channel. Alternatively, if you're looking to gain exposure to all the decentralized perpetual exchanges out there as an investment narrative, the top ones, in my opinion, are Apex, GMX, and DYDX. There isn't a clear winner in terms of token valuations yet, as they are all in their early stages with similar valuations. I highlighted this segment in red, as there really isn't a market leader, so it's more important to gain overall exposure to the sector and keep watching closely. I'll be allocating 2.5% of my portfolio to a basket of coins in this sector. The next category of coins in this portfolio are around the decentralized social media narrative. This is a narrative that I have been particularly bullish on for quite a while and has been highlighted more recently by the rumors of Elon Musk potentially making a decentralized Twitter. And no, I'm not talking about simply putting Twitter on the blockchain. That idea has been tested and failed many times. Rather, I'm referring to the general infrastructure that enables existing Web3 users to have a non-financial layer around their wallet like a social media account. And on the other side, for Web2 social media apps to put some of their data on chain to combat censorship and media manipulation. Web2 social media apps should not see a full migration, but connection to existing Web3 solutions like MetaMask would not hurt. This area is still ripe for disruption as not many projects exist currently for this use case. Two of the leading projects that have caught my eye are Mask Network and Mask Token and Decentralized Social Diesel Token. Mask is a platform that allows you to connect Web3 wallets like MetaMask to Web2 social media platforms like Twitter. This lets users directly encrypt and post content from their wallet to their favorite social media platforms. Diesel is a layer one blockchain specifically built for social media applications. It's quite a controversial project as it first launched as BitCloud, which was a super hyped up project. BitCloud allowed users to purchase creator coins of famous Twitter profiles. Despite all the controversy, it seems that BitCloud was really a marketing stunt to both prove the ability of the diesel blockchain and raise money for its development. I have labeled this part of the portfolio in red because these coins are still relatively small and carry high risk. Also, there should continue to be major projects launching in the next year around the decentralized social media narrative. So we can wait and allocate to these projects later. Notably, the decentralized social media projects I'm watching are Lens Protocol, Farcaster, Ceramic, and Lit Protocol. Overall, this sector will take up 5% of this portfolio. The last category in this portfolio is blockchain gaming infrastructure. The synergy between gaming assets and the blockchain are incredibly clear and should continue to see adoption in the near future. However, the 2021 cycle was plagued by the rise and crash of Play to Earn and GameFi, which ultimately led to many vaporware projects and not many legit options. When it comes to gaming, there are currently five categories you can invest in. First is individual games like Axie Infinity, Illuvium, Star Alice, etc. Then there are metaverse canvas like Sandbox and Decentraland. Third category is gaming blockchains like Immutable X and Engine. Fourth is game publishers and stores like Gala Games and Welcome Forged PYR. And lastly, there are gaming guilds like YGG, Mirror Circle, and Guild Fi. In my opinion, the categories most likely to survive are gaming blockchains and gaming publishers. They are the underlying infrastructures powering the blockchain gaming space. However, even out of these two categories, there are not many good options. Immutable X IMX seems like the most legit solution that provides a ZK Rollup Layer 2 infrastructure for gaming. However, they don't yet have any major game partnerships aside from games that they've made themselves. In contrast, traditional games tend to prefer integrating Solana and Polygon as their blockchains of choice. As I already have both positions in the portfolio, IMX does not seem too appealing. Engine is another contender, but it has fallen off dramatically in the 2021 bull run. It really seems like they have stopped working on the project as there hasn't been a major announcement in ages. In terms of game stores and publishers, Gala Games is everyone's favorite show. 
every major influencer seems to be partnered with them to soft show their potential as the one gaming project to rule them all. Yet, despite all that marketing, there doesn't seem to be major integration from any traditional games, and the Gala token continues to get dumped. All in all, while I truly believe blockchain gaming will continue to see adoption far into the future, there simply isn't any good choices to get investment exposure to the narrative right now. Therefore, I will save this 5% allocation and continue watching this space until some fundamentally strong infrastructure projects emerge with real gaming adoption. Okay, so now you know exactly how I'm making the ultimate crypto portfolio for 2023. As you can see, building a quality portfolio is all about finding quality investments and keeping them diversified, never putting all eggs in one basket. I strongly believe 2023 will be the time to actively accumulate quality projects as most projects have come down to realistic valuations, and signs are showing that the next bull run could be starting this year. So if you want this sort of information before anyone else, join over 8,000 people and subscribe to my free newsletter on virtualbacon.com. Every week, I cover market updates, important events and narratives, as well as my personal investing insights. If you want to learn the ins and outs of fundamental analysis and investing in the world of crypto, consider checking out our new academy program Primal Crypto Academy on primalcrypto.io. This is a new program that I'm starting in early February, and it will function as a live cohort course for me and my team to actively teach you guys everything that we know. If you're watching this video early and you sign up right now, you can also get an early bird discount on the waitlist. That's it for this video. Remember to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.